I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to another edition of Belmont Bulletin. Today, our guest, uh, who's returned, has come back, our town administrator, Patrice Garvin. How are you, Patrice? Nice to see you. Good to see you, Steve. On this uh, Halloween, it's Tuesday, oh, it's it, October 31, it is Halloween, uh, so uh, for timely purposes. So we got 30 minutes, Patrice. I think the hot topic is what? The coming up, the, uh, the special town meeting coming special up. Special town meeting. So it starts, uh, I don't know, this coming Monday, the, the 6th? Uh, November 6th. November 6th, which is, uh, today's Tuesday, so you know, about six days. Yep. And scheduled for what, maybe three nights? Three nights of town meeting, yep. The 8th, Wednesday the 8th, and then of course the next Monday. Think it's going to go all three nights? I do. I think it's a very aggressive agenda that the select board is putting forward uh, to make some impacts in the community. All right, so uh, we have, it uh, looks like we have uh, 11 articles. One is reports, so, so we'll, we'll mm -hmm. dispense with that because that's not a vote. We'll hear to whom whatever reports. Yep. So we might as well go out in order. Sure. So, all right. First one, Community Preservation Committee CPC off-cycle requests. Yep. So what's, uh, what's going on with that? So as you know, every year at annual town meeting, the CPC brings forth annual request to town meeting. These are off-cycle requests. These are requests that the CPC has received that they have deemed critical um, and need to be addressed now. If they wait till town meeting, the funding wouldn't be available until July 1 of next year. Okay. So some of these items um, have been deemed um, emergencies or critical, and that is why the, the CPC is recommending them to town meeting. And there are three. All right. What are they? So the first My one. My job's easy. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is appropriation of about three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars for the community path phase one design. Um, the reason for this, we had originally brought um, an invoice to the board to use some ARPA funds to address a shortfall with the funding for phase one. The reason for the shortfall was back in twenty twenty, prior to the pandemic, the state had um, had a meeting with the town to discuss the Alexander Ave tunnel. And they had recommended tunnel jacking. Mm -hmm. And that is what they had said that they would um, prefer. Fast forward, past pan uh, pandemic, and the state reversed their decision and decided they wanted cut and cover. Each of these requires a different set of engineering standards and things that need to be done to prep uh, for 25 25% design that goes to the state. That had caused additional funding to the town, and that is what we're seeking. We're, we're seeking funds to, to pay that um, change um, in the state's uh, preference. So the state changed. They, 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 well, it's not a double cross, but they, they, they gave you a swerve. Yeah, that's part of it. I think the other part of this is when we first originally came to phase one to the town meeting. Phase one being the, the bridge to Brighton Street. Yes, and okay. the underground. Uh, and the tunnel. And the tunnel. Underneath that, uh, right. the tracks of the high school. That was done in about 2019 time frame, and we were basing the design estimate on a $14 million build. That's generally what you do. You take 10% of what you think the design is. Okay. The design, um, what, what we're seeing now for construction is well over $20 million, probably well over $22 million. If you take 10% of that, obviously the design... What we're finding is the design monies was most likely insufficient to the construction that costs that exist today. So there's a, that's another piece to it. All right, so we have that. All right, well, that'll get debated. But yes, that'll be debated. The rest, so it's gone up a whole bunch. So you said 20, 22, it's, it's funny money at this point in time, but who's supposed to pay that bill? So <laughs> the construction is paid by the state through federal funds. That's okay. the Transportation Improvement Plan. Has that been confirmed as of yet? So they are on the TIP schedule. They are on the, the, the plan. It's just they have to go through now the state design process. And they're submitted 25% design, and they're waiting for a hearing with the state. I'm ho we're hoping that hearing is going to be early next year. Okay, and at what point in time will the funds be actually committed? The last time I think I looked at it was 2026, 27. So there's still some time before we'll actually see construction. Could the wheels fall off that funding in between? I don't think so. Generally, when you make it to the tip, um, when you're on the list, you generally receive funding. It's just when you receive the funding. Okay. All right. Um, secondly, town hall retaining wall? 
Yes, yeah, so this is past spring, the wall that's right outside here. Yeah, that, I, see, I see it out here in front yeah, of town hall. It, it collapsed, and we have to do some engineering work to see what what the the issues are in regards to the wall and how substantial it will be to to fix it. So we need about one hundred sixty thousand to get the engineering work and design work to to fix it. So okay. this is the first part of it. That's the yellow tape and the yeah and the crane. Yeah, and you can't they, use the the, the the driveway that it, it rests on. Um, until we can figure out what exactly is wrong with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can't have it collapse. No, okay. we cannot. Um, and the last item on this on this hunk: school administration building roof restoration. So we have recently done exterior um, analysis of all the three buildings in this complex to see what it would take to renovate. And one of the things that they were looking at during that um, was the school superintendent's office. And apparently, there is a leak in her office. Um, and as you know, leaks don't improve, they just get worse. So this is really to adjust that piece of that project, which is the roof that's leaking in the school and in building. Hmm. Okay. Well, so that know, is got, the CPC. Gotta, gotta do that. And, and, that's, and that's not just part of regular maintenance, that's just, that's a special thing that has to come through that. I mean, it seems to me a leaky roof is, is regular maintenance, but. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity to use some CPC money through the historical because these are historical buildings That's true. to address the fix. All right. Um, and Select Board uh, Dion will be um, briefing town meeting on, on CPC as she is the chair. Yeah, she's still the chair of the uh, yes. Community Preservation Committee, right? That CPC. Is correct. That's yep. what that is, yeah. right? Okay. Well, we look forward to that, and we'll see how that works. The selectmen voted on these things yet, or they do nope, that? Like they do on that email? Monday. On Monday. They're doing that Monday. All right. Anything else on that one? We'll just roll forward. So just roll forward. Okay. Here's something that sounds very sexy: transfers to stabilization funds. That's right. <laughs> so, with the hiring, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing with that? What are we transferring? We're actually for? putting money aside for a rainy day. That's is that what it is? It's a rainy day fund. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. It's our savings fund. That's good. Mm -hmm. As you know, the town recently retained or maintained its AAA bond rating. And I, one of the pra best practices is to build up your stabilization funds. And we continue to do that. And we continue to hold our AAA bond rating. So once it goes in, in the back of my head, so it, it get released by who? By warrant committee? Or is that from a vote from town meeting? Town meeting. Two-thirds vote. Two-thirds vote. So mm -hmm. it goes in. How, what are we putting in? Any idea? Yep. So in the capital stabilization fund, we're putting $727,500. And in the regular general stabilization fund, we're putting $727,500. So seven twenty-seven. so a million, uh, 15, 15 million? No, N 700, 15, no, 700. Million and a half, one point. There's a reason yes, I'm 1. not counting. One point four, one point five million, mm -hmm. roughly. Yep. Put in for slicing it in half and putting one in okay. the cap and one in general. And and they're restricted. So when you say capital, that can only come out for capital. Yes. Generally, stabilization funds are how they're used, how they're intended, and capital stabilization funds are used for capital. And okay. general stabilization, it's whatever town meeting wants to spend. Okay. For. All right. That 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 sounds pretty straightforward. Yep. Okay. Then we get another one here. So we'll cross that one. So that's, uh, well, we'll see. It's always the ones that you don't think will de generate debate. That is correct. Where it'll rock on. Yeah, I think the mood of, t of town meeting plays a role of that. And we will see the mood. Yes, we this, will. This town meeting will be live, in person. Hybrid. Well, people can come in, but it's generally, I think it's supposed to, I heard somewhere, hybrid only with, like, a good reason. Yes, we'll see how that goes. All right. There, I'll save my comments <laughs> for, for live. I'm a big in live person. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. Article four, capital appropriation security cameras at the Wellington and Chenery schools. Sure, so at, at annual town meeting, we had left a little capital money on the table um, accidentally, and this is just a way to clean up the books. The 160,000 we wanna use to finalize the, the, the school security camera projects and have them kind of updated and working in all the schools. Okay. So it's a simple capital appropriation. All right. And that's coming out of where? That's just out of just a special it's out thing? Of the it, it, would, it would be coming out of wherever discretionary capital would be Oh, coming. okay. Just yep. an appropriation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they yep. got a price and all that stuff, and yep. that'll get all presented. Yep. Anything controversial about that? There shouldn't be. Seems to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't anticipate anything. Okay. All right. Here we get the stuff that gets 
uh, pretty technical, I guess. Replace the general bylaw, uh, I guess it's called the stretch code, the energy code with a specialized energy yeah. code, which was this, what I've heard is called opt-in, make yeah. it even a tougher code, energy code. That's right. And this was, this was put on the table by citizens' petition at the annual town meeting, but moved to this one? Yes. If my memory's right. That's right. We were not ready um, to be able to give a, a really good, clear understanding of what we think the impact or what this would do if adopted by the town. Okay. Um, Are we any more ready at this point? Um, I think we're more ready, but I do think it, it's a very nuanced thing. I think, you know, with like anything, you could have unintended consequences that you didn't anticipate. So. I think the board is very much on the lookout to make sure that whatever they endorse and passes at town meeting doesn't have an adverse effect down the road. So with the specialized energy code, so doing my research and, and, and talking to people that you know I've been talking to to kind of get ready for this article, it turns out that there's three, there's three options that a town has. Um, base code, stretch code, and now the specialized code, which some people are calling the opt-in. The town of Belmont in 2011 adopted the stretch code. Mm -hmm. And the town is automatically updated. Their stretch code gets automatically updated every time the state changes their code. They had a residential code in January of this year update. They had a commercial update of July 1 of this year. And then next year, July 1 of 2024, there'll be even another update for residential and commercial. So the state's moving towards electrification and, and, and passive house and really just making um, new construction more energy efficient. And what the specialized opt-in does, it, it kind of brings the town closer or more quickly to a, a, a fossil-free um, new construction. And so I think that what town meeting is going to be asked to do is whether or not they want to move towards that fossil free um, new construction as we kind of go into you know the future. I will say that the board has um, adopted an implementation date of January 1st, 2025. Um, the Department of Energy has told us, the DOER has said that a minimum of six months town should wait before they implement, and the select board chose a little bit longer. As you know, we have a, a new building, um, Inspector of Buildings, that we kind of restructured community development, which now is the Office of Planning and Building. So we wanted to give our staff enough time and to really see what other communities are experiencing that have potentially, that have adopted this and whether or not. If we do, then we can kind of get a better understanding once we implement. Uh, but this is very nuanced. There are a lot of things. The board discussed it last night. There were some concerns that the board had in regards to, you know, what what are the consequences of adopting this in the future? And um, some things we know and some things we don't because the, the towns that just adopted this, really a lot of them were back in the spring. So they don't we don't have real life circumstance or data as to how this impacts the community. Well, it would seem to me that the market will rule. I mean, if you want to spur con uh, building or development here in town to a certain extent, harder if increased energy, because I think it's, there's an expense situation, and I'm looking at some, let me ask you a question, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, uh, but we're going to be building a new library and a new rink. Mm -hmm. uh, will, will adopting this opt-in or this higher specialized energy code affect the buildings, construction and the cost, the bottom line? So no, what, what impacted the, the, the library and the rink is the updated stretch code. You know, as the stretch code updated, that's what was um, really hitting those numbers. But the opt-in, no, because they're gonna be fully electrified anyway. So this will not impact them. It, I have heard from some developers that have said that it would cost more. I gotta think it's gonna cost yeah. more. Everything yeah. gotta cost more. Yeah. I, I don't know what the guess. I, I'm, I'm a guy that likes choice. I like. Uh, redundancy, I think I talked to you before that. I don't like being beholden to all electric electrification. Goes out, sorry, it goes out. Sure. You have blackouts, there isn't enough. You plug in electric cars, there's not enough. They have rolling blackouts in California. They had an ice storm that knocked out stuff in southern New Hampshire, northern Massachusetts, within the last, I don't know, several years for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah. Uh, millions down in Dallas with an ice storm, it goes out. Yeah. Um, 
that's the way it is. And you have one supplier. That bothers me too. But that's okay. That's, a, that's just for so, another day. Yeah, I mean, this is where Massachusetts is going. It's just we're asking town meeting to get there quicker. I don't know. I like my gas stove. I think <laughs> if you ask most cooks, they like their gas stove. But uh, anyway, all right. We will roll on. We'll see how that works. Yep. Uh, then we have a couple of uh, uh, some more zoning bylaws. Okay, one for restaurants, one dealing that's related with off-street parking. Numbers six and seven on your program. Uh, amend the zoning bylaws for restaurants. That's going to go forward. And then there's one that's uh, related to off-street parking, which is not going to go forward at this meeting. So what's the gist of the change for the restaurants? Sure. <clears throat> so as you know, the town of Bellman is heavily residential. Most, if not all, of our tax base is Town of Homes. This. Town of Homes. So the select board have made a really concerted effort to inc to diversify the tax base with trying to get new uh, businesses in town. Mm -hmm. um, we had a uh, we have an economic development committee that's working on that. Um, select board Dion came on in in the spring, and she really wanted to address the restaurants. She she was very clear that when she was campaigning, she heard a lot about you know the struggle to open a restaurant in town given given the the zoning bylaws that are in place. So this was an initiative to try and streamline it and make it much easier for restaurants to come to town, set up shop, and then obviously start generating that revenue that we sorely need um, from the business districts. So this is an attempt to do that, and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes at town meeting. There are some amendments that have been filed. Um, the board, my board, is working through that um, currently, and I think it's going to generate a lot of debate at town meeting, as, as zoning usually does. So uh, uh, just sort of as a generalization, without getting too much into the weeds, it's seeking to put, uh, to allow restaurants in all the business districts. We have several business mm -hmm. districts, local okay. business one, two, yeah. three, general business. There are various districts around town. That's right. And certain districts allowed restaurants by right, and certain districts didn't. So and this is an attempt to sort of allow them restaurants in all the business districts with some type of control over the types of restaurants, let's say, uh, that would go in. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, McDonald's is something that's being looked at. No. Um, but perhaps something like illegal seafood or something else might, might be working. Capital Grill, if we could ever get so lucky. Sure. 99, I suppose. Family rest. But mm -hmm. those, those will do it. Hanami seems to be... Full up there, the new sushi yes. place up in Cushing Square. It's by my office. I go by every night when I go home, and there's people. There's a lot of people yeah. in it. Yeah. So. Uh, so that that's the intent, and um, like I said, I, I, we'll see how town meeting receives okay. it. Okay. And the off street parking one that that dealt with. I guess that's being pulled for further study because restaurants need parking for seats. Yeah, there there seems to be a little bit more um, work that needs to be done. So the board decided to pull it and bring it forward in the spring. Okay. Fair enough. So that's, there we go. Oh, here's, here's a one that should go fly by, right? Yes. Removal from civil service, removing the police from civil service. Uh, warrant Article 8. It's probably going to take a whole night. I think so. <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of interest in, I think there's a lot of interest in understanding. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the town meeting members, you know, there's a lot of things that go into how people are hired in town. There's the general practice and what we would like to, to do, and this has been talked about since I've been here, is remove the police from civil service. The, the police chief came to me really early on uh, when he was hired as the police chief that he would like to see the department be removed from civil service. He sees challenging, at the time he saw a lot of challenges with the hiring process and, and given the, the civil service hiring procedures and the more vacancies that the town has been incurring, it's been harder and harder to get um, a number of applicants to choose from to apply to those positions. So this is really um, an effort by the board and the, and the chief to improve the department. Um, it's a public safety department. We take it very seriously. We take the safety of the residents very seriously, and we want to make sure we have the best qualified applicants um, that we hire in, in the town. And I, I think this is an initiative that I think town meeting is going to have a lot of questions on. There, there are a lot of questions. We have all the answers. Um, it's just going to be a, a lot of discussion because it's so, you know, it is very intricate and detailed uh, because unions are involved and, and management and things like that. So, so and this is only for the police department, not only the fire the department? Nope. nope. 
The critical need at this point in time is police because of the number of vacancies, the length of time it takes to hire, and just how challenging it has been. Okay, well, well, we'll see how that sort of works. I mean, if it takes it out, then you lose what I, what I would call the civil service protections. Yep, and those get negotiated um, with the union. Uh, the union has been uh, given language of what the town would pro be proposing. We gave that to them a couple of years ago after the last town meeting um, that we pulled the article and we gave them language after that. And um, yeah, so the union is well aware of what the town is proposing. Okay, and does it affect the current staff, the current officers and, and police civilian no. staff current, that are on duty now? Current police will retain their civil service um, status. Um, this applies to new police officers we hire and then any promotions. Um, so if you have a police officer uh, promoted to a sergeant, they would stay in civil service as a police officer, but not as a sergeant. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it to know what the effect of that will be. Sure. But uh, I suppose I will learn about it come Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Monday. Whenever this It'll hits. be Monday night. It'll be Monday night. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, nothing like hitting it with the sliding into it. I, I think it's time for town meeting to have this discussion. <laughs> I okay. think we've been waiting a long time to have the discussion. All right. So all right. So that now we have what do we have here so we got a seven and a half minutes left so we got a couple left a couple of citizens petitions yep one for a home rule legislation a 61b exemption which i understand is something dealing with uh taxation of the is this going to be for the belmont country yeah is this the the, there's country only group? one property in town that falls under a 61b exemption and that is the country club so that will generally look to try and ask well it's asking the board to either write a home rule petition or special ed, special act um, to address the taxation of the country club. So 61B, so they get a, 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 a beneficial or a more advantageous yes. tax rate? They're yes, not they're tax not, rate. that is correct. Uh, so, okay, so they're being taxed in that way. And this seeks to do, so this is seeking, this isn't changing the tax, this is seeking the select board to act. take some type of an act to advance something to the legislature yep which may or may not follow it or allow it or do it exactly. at all. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see here. And that's from citizens, I guess, 25 yes, citizens. Yes, that is from a citizen's petition. Okay. And we have another citizen's petition. Uh, citizen petition, transition from elected to appointed board of assessors. Yep, so that is also being withdrawn. Uh, the select board at their last meeting called for a special town meeting to address this issue in January. So January 22nd of 2024. We'll have a special town meeting to address this article, which is making the assessors appointed. They are currently elected. Okay. So there'll be more to come on that. Okay. So they have. So we're having another town meeting in January just yes. for this. Yes. It most. It'll be remote. Just for that. I won't get so into So you can remote. you can sit we're in your chair. We're going backwards. Steve. Are we sliding <laughs> backwards? Um, you know, we're, in we're the, regressing. We're, we're having well, a town we're, meeting live in, in next week. Well, you know, what remote. the law does is it allows us to be, you know, it gives us some I, options. You know, in January, you never know what the weather. The weather is always a much bigger deal um, for oh, a town please, meeting. Please, please, yeah. stop it. Stop it. it it's, I think it's an excuse, quite frankly, because mm -hmm. this town was, what, 19, 1859? Not that we had remote capability there. But up until 2019, we operated just fine, in live, in person, sure. and who could come, come, and who couldn't, couldn't. That's just the nature of the beast. It does give the town options to have different types of town meetings. I will say that. Well, you just don't know who's listening. Okay. No, yeah. You don't. During the crisis of, and this is just my editorialization, no, not on you or anything else, but, but during the crisis where we were locked down for for COVID. Mm -hmm. I get the practicality or the fact that we couldn't meet in person uh, per the Board of Health. And it was comfortable sitting in my easy chair, munching on some peanuts, drinking yep. a cool drink. But you doze off. You're just looking at a computer screen with a name. You don't see anybody. You don't know who's in line. You don't know who's voting. You don't even know if people are watching. You, you don't know. It, it's, it just drones on. And it's not productive. You talked about reading the room. Read the town. You can't read the room. You have no idea. You're just looking at some blank screen with the name Steve Rosales or <laughs> Joe Smith or whoever. That's you don't even know who's listening. So well, well, I mean, again, it's the moderator's call. 
So maybe if you lobby well, the moderator. I'll go talk to the moderator because <laughs> I don't know, things are in November is okay and January is worse because of the weather. Stop it. Mm. I've been to I've been I've been in towns where town meetings had to be canceled because of the snow. Well, in any event, you thought this was going to be an easy. <laughs> well, is it, mercifully, there's only three minutes oh, left, well, so there, there you, go. you go. So the torture will end soon. So, okay, so we'll see how that works. So that's getting dismissed anyway. Getting dismissed. Anyway. So then we have appropriation from opioid settlement stabilization fund. So I guess we have an opioid. That's a program. What, what, so what's we had that? some money come in to the uh, settlements of, of the opioid industries and we will be appropriating some money to start doing some planning on how to spend the money that we receive. Um, we have public safety, some residents in the community trying to figure out. The, the law of how to spend is very strict and you can only spend it for certain things and we want to make sure we comply with the law. Terrific. Well, that sounds like that's a reasonable purpose, yep. and, and we'll find out what, what that will be yep. um, at some point in time in the next week. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, that, that winds up the warrant articles. We got, I don't know, a couple minutes. So uh, can you give me a, a real thumbnail update on the budget? So the budget <laughs> process is going along. Um, we'll be meeting with the select board in early November to meet with the departments. We are working on revenue estimates that we shared in our first budget summit. The second budget summit will be at the end of November. We'll be hopefully presenting an override budget. And then after that, um, we'll be presenting a no override budget. So that's what we'll be working on in the next probably six weeks. All right. Nothing gets the blood moving like good budget. <laughs> yep. And we'll be hopefully getting <laughs> to, to an override budget. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it is definitely busy. Um, two budgets, town meeting. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. Throw some Thanksgiving in there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, well, all right. That winds it up. We got through the town meeting. I don't yeah. think I don't think it'll take that quick. We're not going to do it in a half an hour. Once we get it going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And t tune in. It'll be on cable. It'll, it'll be, be on, on cable. Media. Yeah. Be on your computer. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how that works. So, uh, I want to thank you for coming on in again, taking Thanks, time Steve. out of your busy yeah. day, rolling us through. Thank you. Uh, this has been Belmont Bulletin. Uh, I'm Steve Rosales. Thanks to our Cracker Jack staff. We have Jeff Hansen. We have our producer, Matt Simonelli, back there behind the camera. So uh, until next time, take care.